we are going to go down to Finbladder Castle. That's the old ducket. It is freezing. I'm very exposed. We'll see how we'll go. Welcome to Exploring Scotland History. This castle dates from 15th century, possibly incorporating elements of late 14th century castle, though it has been registered as a stronghold from the 13th century. This is a sort of reconstruction drawing showing the fortification that Sir Walter Ogilvy of Upleven was permitted to do by King James II. So that is Findletter Castle, 50 feet up on the cliff, and boy you can feel it with the wind. It's a stunning ruin, and I'm going to tell you the history of it now, but what I would say is, don't wear your best boots when you're coming up to the castle. Mud fest. Findletter comes from the Gaelic, meaning white cliff certainly cliffy down there. The first record of the castle here was 1246. In the early 1260s, Alexander III strengthened its defences when he was waiting for King Hakon IV of Norway to invade. Though the Norwegians were defeated at the Battle of Lard, there is still a presumption that the Norse did occupy this site. What we see today dates from the 1450s that Sir Walter Ogilvy did build. Previous to this, the Sinklers had owned it. Ogilvy was licensed to fortify the castle. He was an ancestor of the Earls of Airlie and would eventually become Sheriff of Banffshire. We have a wee story about uh, Mr. Ogilvy that is based in Banff itself and I'll show you some pictures around the beautiful little town of Banff, historic town of Banff, and tell you that story too. But in 1560, Ogilvy disinherited his son in favour of Sir John Gordon. Sir John was the son of the Earl of Huntley. His grasp on the castle, however, would be short-lived. In 1562, Sir John refused entry to Mary, Queen of Scots and her troops were sent to seize the castle. Sir John beat them back successfully. Sir John Gordon may have beaten Mary Queen of Scots troops back here. He wasn't so successful at the Battle of Karachi, which is quite close to Aberdeen. There, his sword charging tactics were absolutely no match for Mary Queen of Scots' army who used the pike. There are two stories that discuss his demise. On the Gordon clan website, they suggest that Gordon was taken to Aberdeen after being captured and was beheaded. So there are sources that say that he died of apoplexy as soon as he was arrested. In other words, he had a hissy fit and died. That's very strange. The Ogilvies reclaimed their castle Though when given the title of Earl of Finbrother in 1638, they built the grander abode of Cullen House. Like so many castles, we visit Finbrother as a resident ghost, or two. The story goes that a few hundred years ago, there was a nurse holding her charge at the open window of the castle when the young boy leapt from her arms out the window, down the cliff and into the crashing waves below. She, in her panic, followed him. So obviously both drowned at this stage. But apparently there have been sightings of a young lady roaming about the area behind us looking for the boy. 
and the boy has been sighted as well, if you want to believe that. So that was Sunblitter Castle and the stories that go with it. On the way back, we are going to have a wee look at the Ducat, which has actually been transformed over the years, but it would have been in the use for the final 100 years of the castle. The word ducat is a Scots word. Do is Scots for pigeon. Tradition says that if a ducat is destroyed, a family member would die within the year. This beehive design is the oldest design for ducats and it dates from the 16th century. The protruding ledges on the outside of the building are in an attempt to deter rats from entering the structure. There are around 700 nesting boxes which rise up to an opening at the top to allow the birds to enter and exit. The younger pigeons, or peasers as they are called, would be harvested at around four weeks old. They would be removed from the nesting boxes early in the morning when the adult birds were out feeding. This is a Category A listed building. So that was Findlater Castle and Ducat. Please like, subscribe and leave a comment, it really helps the channel grow. Hit the bell icon and you won't miss my next exploration of Scotland's history. Can I thank everyone who supports the channel by buying me a coffee? I leave a link to the coffee page below, as well as my other social media on which I post regularly. Until next time, thanks for watching.